Welcome to the Core Women Podcast, the place for women entrepreneurs, authors, and self-starters looking to build community and gain valuable insights through expert interviews with women at the top of their game. Join your host, podcaster, producer, expert coach, entrepreneur, and author, Dr. Summer Watson, as she aims to inspire and empower you through these candid conversations. Lean in and embrace the journey. It's time to start the show. Here's your host, Dr. Summer Watson. Today on the show, I would like to welcome Smita Joshi, who is an award-winning author, avid yogi and teacher, mentor, and high-performance transformation coach. Smita is the author of the Amazon bestseller, Karma and Diamonds Trilogy, a journey of self-discovery across continents and lifetimes. She has had a 25-year professional history of working with technology giants and transitioned from that to curating a personal and professional journey she is passionate about. She is also the host and creator of her YouTube channel, The Self-Discovery Channel. We have so much to explore and talk about today, so let's jump right into this. And welcome, Smita. Hi, Summer. How are you doing? Thank you so much for having me on the show. I am doing great. But before we dive into more of those professional aspects of your life, let me ask you a question. How would you describe your journey in one word thus far? Liberation. Liberation. Can you tell me why that word is so meaningful for you? I was going to say freedom, but actually liberation is probably more accurate. And the reason why that word is is really um, accurate for me is because everything that I have focused on, everything that I've been working on in my inner journey and then creating externally is really about freeing myself from the limitations that either I grew into, I, I grew as in, as in I, I took birth into the situations, the circumstances that ensued, just the internal dialogue aspect of it, the limitations that we constantly, I certainly find out myself coming up against, constantly pushing up against in terms of my boundaries of consciousness. So it's always about setting myself free from something in order that I can take the next giant step. And so for me, the word liberate and also the, the liberation, I guess, coming from uh, the Vedic context, it's really the Indian philosophies are really truly spiritual philosophies are truly about uh, liberation, as in like creating freedom from they we call it moksha or yeah, let's say use the word moksha. Moksha is really always referred to as the the freedom from the cycle of birth and rebirth, because in, in between it's in those cycles that you, you create, you do things and therefore you, you gather more impressions, you know, more evidence for certain things and evidence against other things. And some of it sticks. And, and so, you know, we, we kind of shape ourselves in our living experience, lived experience. And so moksha is really referred to as the freedom from the cycle of birth and rebirth. But in fact, the true meaning, as I come to understand it, is more about freedom from the constraints um, that we have of our own self-awareness and how we understand the world. Often we understand the world in ways which are we see things through certain filters. And so we're not seeing the true picture of what's really out there and what life actually is. And so we often think that we have the answers and we're seeing things accurately, but in fact, we're not because our own perceptions are so sullied with our own experiences. So the the idea of liberation for me is the journey of transformation, self-discovery, all of that is really about setting myself free from the illusions that you know I'm seeing life through such that I can truly access uh, I can access the, the 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 true consciousness or the consciousness that that exists beyond the limitations of my material existence and of my human mind because uh, you know my emotions feelings everything that gives me the impression that this is how life is and then only to realize that actually it's not, it, there is no is. And so liberation is really the idea of 
looking at life beyond my conditioning. Gotcha. No, I get that. I absolutely get that. First, you've mentioned so many things that I can attend to. So for instance, the lived experience. I come from a research background from phenomenology. And that's just a fancy word of the lived experience. And really just taking the idea of being objective and being able to recognize and be in that lived experience. So I love that you mentioned that. I love that you mentioned the conditioning. And again, that goes back to the psychology of operant conditioning, what we've been conditioned to believe, what we have been conditioned to learn throughout our lives, and how do we separate that from what we truly believe and how we're actually living in that liberation, right, that you talk about. It is so important, so valuable. So my next question is, let's talk a bit about your personal journey, such as where you grew up and what influenced you and how you developed your purpose and passion. I was born in India in a port town called Porbandar, which is best known for being the hometown of Mahatma Gandhi. So his family, you know, were there for like 200 years or so. My mother's side of my family, all always from, from the same town. So my mom was born there. I was born there. And, you know, my maternal side of the family come from there. So that was where I was born. And um, I, I lived there till I was 10. And then we moved to London because my father's side of the family, they were from Uganda. And in 1970, 1970, I think it was 1972, I can't remember, 70 or 72, uh, I think 72, Idi Amin threw everybody out of Uganda. So it's as in everybody, all the Indians out of Uganda. And so where my father's side of the family had made a home there for several decades, you know, half a century probably by then, you know, created businesses and homes and property and a whole life there. Then they all had to leave overnight with 10 pounds in their pockets. So then they came to London as refugees um luckily they they you know they were taken in under asylum and um and very quickly you know we all well we joined them a few years later from india and um so yeah everybody basically had to create a fresh life find a new way of living in a new land that they hadn't actually thought they were ever going to do so then we came to the uk and um yeah and so there was this this for me as a 10 year old i was oblivious to everything all i could see was this new place i was just like wow wow this is amazing i love this here you know so everything was an adventure and i absolutely loved coming to london and and settling here and so yeah and and that opened up a whole different future to the one that i would have had had i stayed in india so you know languages learning french and german and you know english although i spoke english you know but really having english become the main language and so the cultural element of it there's this huge we were first we were very early into this country so there was this amazing adventure of understanding how Things happen outside the home and things happen in the home with the tradition and so on. So that was a, that was a journey. And I was, you know, one of the first sort of kids of my grandparents. I was the first, I was the oldest of, of, of all my grand, grand, as in like grandchildren. And so that was really very, very interesting. And I just happened to find that as well as that, I, I, I seem to have this visionary, um, awareness which I didn't know I, I had until many many years later which wasn't helpful because what I was thinking and how I embraced life was perhaps 30 years ahead of its time in the culture and and just in general even at work and you know how I thought so that created some some tension in integration and so on you know integrating sort of western values with the ones that we lived with at home and so on um, but what it did was it truly made me question who I am. And it had me start at a very, very early age. At the age of 14, I was already like super interested in the human being. What makes us human? What about the, 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 the higher element of who we are? And so I, I would go to the library every weekend and I would pick up as many books as I could on topics that you know, that would resonate in this area. So whether it's Wayne Dyer or whether it's positive thinking or whether it's yoga or whatever. 
So my interest really began in trying to understand why why I was experiencing this conflict. Um, and I'm I'm somebody that, you know, I love people, I love connecting. So I wanted to understand myself better and understand people better. And so that was where the interest grew in terms of, um, you know, who, who am I? The question, who am I and what is life for? And, and that became really very interesting to me alongside of everything else that I did in life. So study, started working when I was 20, had my first place when, you know, bought my first place when I was 21, <laughs> working in a corporation. I made enough money in the first year to go and buy my first property and uh, so on. So, you know, um, alongside of that, that question never quite went away. It was never quite went away. It was very deep. And so I, I got more and more into, you know, meditation. My, I'd grown up watching my dad meditating since I was a child. So that was something that I hadn't been taught, but I, but I sat down one day, came home and I just wanted to have some questions answered. And I wondered whether I might try, you know, doing what he did. You know, maybe I'd try meditation. I didn't know what to do, but I just closed my eyes. And that was where a lot of things started to bubble from being deeper into my consciousness into coming into the surface of my consciousness. And I started, you know, that that's truly where the journey began. I think for me, hmm. I love that evolution and how you were trying to not just acculturate, but really find yourself in all of that change. And I wouldn't say chaos, but just change and evolution. Right. And mm-hmm. so I get it. I really get it because I come from a background, a very diverse background. My dad is Filipino and Hispanic and my mom is Armenian and European. And so I was always trying to find out, who am I in all this? What is this like? And a lot of people would make assumptions about who I am culturally or, you know, so people would laugh at me when I went to UC Berkeley, they would say, are you a culture major? Because I would take all these culture classes to find out and learn and dig deeper right? Because I like you, I love people. And then I started studying phenomenology and people's lived experiences and understanding that better. And so I realized at that time, like you, you have a passion, you have a purpose, you have a vision. And my vision was that I wanted to be inclusive. And that didn't mean being exclusive, being part of different groups. It means being inclusive of the world of the people. And so my perception about how we function, the lived experience was a little different than others. And so I think it was stretched because of those experiences that we went through. So we love hearing about your experience, how that created a passion for you. And then how that curiosity, your curiosity, when you came home, when your dad was modeling that meditation, you leaned in and said, I want to learn about this. I want to try this. And as you said, things started bubbling, things started happening. And so that's where that passion started to really blossom. So I love that about your story. So let's talk about, and you touched on this a little, overcoming that past and how you approach this on a personal level and then how you support your clients in overcoming the, their past in order to thrive. This is something that you talk about. So if you could touch on that, I would love to hear what you have to say. You know, Summer, I think one of the biggest things that I am surprised to learn about human beings is that you truly don't know another person. You know, one of the things as a as a coach and as a, a mentor and as I grow as a human being, I've realized is that it's so, so wrong. And there are not many things that are wrong, but this would be so wrong for me to assume that I understand you because you have said a few things, for example, where we may have a commonality of experience. But it's so important. Uh, one of the things that I've learned when I'm coaching uh, and supporting somebody else on their journey is to assume that I get their experience. Mm-hmm. It's important not to do that because we really don't understand how it occurs in somebody else's world. It may resonate at a certain level, but it's a very, it's, it's really important to give them an opportunity to show up for themselves and to explain things and to share things. And I think this is where a lot of relationships go wrong because people do make assumptions that they know you. I find that especially when it's somebody you've known for a long time, whether it's family, friends, and so on, they make this assumption that just because 
I mean, you, you may have barely had conversations with them in your life. They've barely, you know, asked you or, or, or spent time with you. And yet they assume they know what you're doing or what you're up to or who you are and what you're really like. And then, so one of the things that, that as a, I have learned for myself and as, as a coach, I'm, I'm very conscious of is not to relate to somebody else through my own fantasy of them, who I think they are and, and to really give them the, grant them the being uh, to, to give them the freedom to show up as who they are right. And, and the, you know, right today may not be how they were two weeks ago because stuff could have happened two weeks ago that has then had them evolve in some way and so on. So that's one of the major, major things that I'm grappling with as a human being in service or wishing to be in service of others is to really grant them that being and let them show up as who they are today right now and then relate to that person from that place and I think that's such wise words and I think that also aligns with that phenomenology that we're talking about in that person's lived experience where they are today tomorrow next week and that meeting is going to be different each time so I think it's interesting that you say we don't really know people And you're right, there are a lot of assumptions made about people. So I think that's what interests me so much in when I did my research is learning about Herschel's phenomenology, that lived experience, what each person experiences throughout their life. Yes, we have these commonalities. Yes, maybe there's an alignment in certain aspects, but your journey is going to look very different than my journey. And how we interpret that looks very different too. So that's why when you're going through your coaching sessions and you're meeting with groups and people and individuals, as I have as a therapist, as a counselor, we do those intakes, those journeys. We listen to their journeys so we can kind of call out and ask the questions about those experiences, about their lived experiences. So I love that you mentioned that. I'm going to take a bit of a detour here. Let's talk about your trilogy, Karma and Diamonds, and the impetus for the series. The one thing that really sort of, uh, how can I say, it was a tough writing process. The one thing that really put me through all of the difficulties and all the blocks and everything else was the one thing that I felt it was really crucial to share with people uh, the experience, the the experience of listening to that inner voice of what, what the Sanskrit sages called Atman. They called it Atman. Atman is that aspect of your consciousness, which is connected to all of everything, but it is a subset of that connected to that. And you can't get to the all of everything on your own as through the human mind, because there is, because that's limited. The nervous system is so limited. So we have this bridge as it were, which is Atman. And that is your true conscious. That's the consciousness that we are according to Indian spiritual philosophies. That's who we are beyond our human conditioning, beyond everything that we know ourselves to be uh, at the level of our mind and humanity. And that part of us is untainted. That part of us is not, is unchanging. It is said to be eternal. It is said to be that which cannot be corrupted in it by anything, by experience, by time, by, by anything. And that it is said when you're talking about the real self, if ever there is a real self, that would be the the self that we're talking about, the Atman. And somehow, I, I don't know whether, I think I may have been perhaps born with it or it got activated when I was seven where something happened and I had this epiphany. I had this ex- extremely deep, powerful experience which opened me to seeing and experiencing things beyond just the, the five senses. And that inner voice that I'm talking about is the voice of that aspect, that part of you that is always watching. We call it the witness, the observer, talking to you at all times as if, you know, if we had our antenna up, we might just hear it. But often we don't because of all the noise, the internal dialogue we have, all the presumptions that we have, assumptions we have, conditioning we have, and so on. We don't actually 
hear it. So my journey, a lot of what I have, because I didn't have role models at the time, I didn't have guides at the time, I, I, I had to rely on that inner voice. And this is the inner voice that I started to listen to and trust, to trust with my life. And it never, ever took me you know, off the path. It literally guided me to where I needed to go next. Sometimes it took me into places that were very unpredictable and a little bit like, what the hell am I doing here? But then it became evident afterwards. So the reason I wrote Carmen Diamonds is to share that journey of, you know, what exactly that voice is and how powerful a voice it is. If we can just allow ourselves to connect to it, to listen to it, to give it some, some granted some being, you know, but it does take clearing away some aspects of our past, hence the karma element. Uh, and we don't know how how deep the, the past stretches. And, you know, I know some people believe in past lives, some people don't. I am not bothered about that because my experience has been in listening to this inner voice. It's taken me into awakening memories and, and awareness that has you know, existed before this body and this life. And for me, there is no distinction between the, 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 it's like the memory or the consciousness is a continuum. And the fact that I came into this body, uh, uh, you know, on a certain day through a certain mother and had a certain set of experiences is just an opportunity for continuation of the learning that that's been kicked off some other place. But what happens on our journey is that we sometimes get stuck. So sometimes things don't resolve in the way they should. So we may have had experiences in the past beyond this physical existence, which were incomplete, where there may have been abrupt endings and beyond your control, or things may have happened in relationships, which were so intense that they continue on at a level below the awareness, the consciousness as a patterning that shows up in different times, in different places, with different people. And the outcome and the experience is very familiar. And how is it so familiar? Because as far as you're, you know, as far as you're aware in this body now, that's never happened in this lifetime before, but perhaps it happened elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So my journey has been really to go deep into um bringing up those awarenesses so that I can actually complete aspects of my past that were actually very, very intensely impinging on my present. And I couldn't understand why certain outcomes were not taking place, despite the fact that, you know, I was making the right effort, I was getting the right support, whatever, you know, and sometimes I wasn't getting the right support because there was some sabotage going on. So, so that's the journey that the Carmen Diamonds is really about and, and how I managed to get that deep and be taken to exactly the experiences that I needed to be was by listening to this, this very silent, very wise guidance. Um, and going, it, it includes going to places like a certain library, opening a certain book, not the, this other one, but only this one, making a trip to, to some place like Santa Fe or Bali or India or whatever. And just meeting that one person who then was able to take me on the next, you know, to, on the next stepping stone and the next one. So I wrote Common Diamonds because I, I wanted to share that journey. It, was, it, it reads, like fiction, but it's actually, you know, they say fact is often stranger than fiction. So that's, that's what common diamonds is. It's really un unraveling all of those, the web of karma, as it were, of my past in a way that was so entrenched and so sticky that I couldn't get past it. I could not connect with people in spite of the fact that I love being with people, but I, there came a point when I just found myself feeling so disconnected and that was a trigger for me to then inquire a bit deeper. So Carmen Diamonds is really about understanding that we do have things that that are limiting us in the present. And often they are deeper than what we know now. It could be from a past as we as we remember it now, or it could be even beyond that. And even if you don't go beyond this body, this life, this particular life, enough to go back in time to just complete some things, bring, you know, completion to certain aspects of our life. And then the other thing is the one thing that will, that you can truly count on, if you can go past all the noise, of, you know, of our human noise, then perhaps 
the voice that is guiding you, ask for its guidance, ask it to show you the way forward. What should I do next? Where should I go next? How can I really heal so thoroughly and deeply? And it will take you there. And that's the journey that I'm sharing. I love it. There's so much that people can really tune into there, can grab onto and follow your journey. And maybe something will also resonate with them and they can take away and apply to their lives as well in that trilogy. It sounds wonderful. And so just, just sorry to interrupt you, Summer, uh, thinking about the journey, some of, some of the things are so blissful. I mean, it took me swimming with wild dolphins off the coast of the Pacific Ocean of Hawaii. I fell in love with those those creatures and you would not believe the encounters I've had with these 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 creatures you know like it's amazing and there's so many other things that the lessons that were taught in the journeys you know they they're epiphanies that they can't revert you back to your previous state they're so deep and so powerful and joyful yeah so right. absolutely and I hope that Every person can experience that. And you've touched on a lot of different things in relation to your journey, your past, why you wrote Karma and Diamonds, um, how this evolution occurred, your purpose, your passion, all these various things. And it sounds so exciting and so much that would resonate with so many. Touch on briefly your YouTube channel, the Self Discovery Channel. Can you just tell me what that's about? It started out when I was uh, presenting for a TV channel where I was interviewing uh, people in the House of Lords, House of Commons here in in London, in the Parliament. And and then I just thought I I wanted to just have a holding place for for those those interviews. I asked them if I could have those interviews. I just put them there. And then I wanted to develop my own content. So I started to really reach out to the the gurus who have big followings in the world. And some of them didn't in those days uh, when I first started. And they today have like millions and millions of people who are devoted to them. So I, I interviewed entrepreneurs, gurus and so on, and, you know, tried to extract as much knowledge and wisdom as I could from anyone who would talk to me. And then after a while, I felt that, you know, that the, the YouTube scenario was changing and um, I wanted to create my own content too, but I didn't quite know how. So I, I then stepped back a little bit and then I figured that out now. And so I'm really creating content around, call it self-discovery if you like, call it personal transformation, you know, but the, the content is really about emotional intelligence, uh, spiritual intelligence, and about personal, personal growth. And the things that trip us, I mean, the last one that I'm just, I just posted was about core values and how critical core values if you want to if you really want to make the right decision every time then we need to have figured out our core values and I give four steps in which you can do that fairly straightforward so you know and they go for imposter syndrome there's a whole bunch of uh, topics that I talk about anything that helps us to thrive and go beyond our limitations well I love that I'm sure there's so much to gain from your channel from your books and just your story. So that's why I love having women on the Core Women podcast because we all have a different story. It's also unique. And there's so much that people can learn from these stories. So my last question, and as we come to the close of the interview, my last question is, if you were to leave the listeners with some words of wisdom, what would they be? I say, trust your journey. Totally trust your journey. Trust and connect to that part of you that will never mislead you. That is the profound learning. As people look at life purpose, what is my life purpose? So all the spiritual texts that I've read, philosophical texts that I've read, whether they're Indian or Greek or wherever else, they all seem to point you inwards. They always, you know, the the journey is truly the journey of connecting with the essence of who we truly are beyond our humanity. The humanity is like this hide and seek that's going on. In the Gita, they call it, Krishna calls it Leela. Leela means a place, the play of life. You know, we're kind of playing hide and seek from ourselves a little bit. So there's this, this human body, human mind, the limitations of all of that. And then there's this vast consciousness that we are beyond all of that, that we um, that is just just there. It's just all the time there. It's just like got nothing else in time to do but to but to play, you know. So the the real purpose, whether whether you think you know your purpose is to I don't know create some large technology company or whatever it is, but essentially as human beings with a divine essence, 
it's really to integrate with that essence, you know, with becoming more and more of that. So our self-expression is more and more given by that higher consciousness, that consciousness that is freed itself from the illusions, the veils of Maya, the, the illusions that we have as human beings think we know all the answers, but maybe we don't know, uh, or we're seeing things from our filters. So that's the journey. And, and that's really why listening to that inner voice the voice of that essence of who you are, that that consciousness, the wise conscious part of you is perhaps the journey because you can then reach more and more into that so that the, the things that you choose for yourself in life are really guided by that. And that's when you feel fulfilled. Yeah. That's the fulfillment because everything we do to look good or to impress other people, to fix aspects of ourselves we don't like, it's not really very fulfilling. Absolutely. Well, I love those words of wisdom. Thank you for joining me on the Core Women podcast today, Smita. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Summer. It's so, so lovely to have this conversation with you. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. Thank you. You can follow Smita Joshi on Facebook at Karma and Diamonds, Twitter at Smita underscore Joshi, on Instagram at Smita Joshi 108, Smita Joshi on LinkedIn on YouTube at Smita Joshi TV and www.smitajoshi.com. Thank you for joining us on the Core Women Podcast with Dr. Summer Watson. We're so glad you're here and would love to connect more with you. Find us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Core Women and on Twitter at Core Women One. For more about Core Women and Dr. Watson, visit corewomen.com. Want more support and resources for amazing women like you? Great! Join Dr. Watson and Jen Fontanilla at the Life, Love, and Money Collective, a core women production that aids in understanding the key traits that might be getting in the way of living a life that you are absolutely passionate about. Connect with Summer and Jen and find out more at thelifeloveandmoney.com.